Bonjour, je suis Juliette, bienvenue dans ce podcast. Dans le cadre de Bâton Studio, j'interviewe une personnalité sur sa spiritualité. Ici, nous parlons des cartes du tarot, de superstitions, de fantômes, de la vie après la mort, de destin, de croyances de manière générale. Dans cet épisode, nous rentrons dans l'intimité d'un invité qui partage avec nous ses expériences magiques. Bonne écoute been a tool it's been guidance I think you know it's a way to create movement create thought uh, mostly guidance I think it's, it's a like a really beautiful way to understand certain things and yourself you know uh, through yeah something that's also bigger something that's uh, beyond you know and I think for me the the effect Or every time I get my, my cards read, it just, it makes me think, you know, it makes me exit myself, exit my body for a second and be like, okay, there's something bigger here. Um, but I would say the, the main thing is guidance. It's, it's a way to like reorient myself in, in my path and, and remember my North Star, you know? Yeah. The thing be bigger than mm -hmm. us, what yeah. is it? Hmm. I think for me, it's it's like um, the only way that I can explain it really truly is like um, just like a collection of energies, you know. Us, it's people, it's connection, it's the universe, you know. You can call it, I think, many different things. People, I think, connect to this beyond through religion, through each other, you know. It's purely like a reminder that we're a collection of something bigger, you know, it's like a, whether that's, you know, your ancestors, um, whether it's the earth itself, you know, I think it's like a, just a collection of energies. I think that's how I've always understood the beyond. You told me that uh, you had your card mm -hmm. reading, but do you do yourself? Never. Never. Mm -hmm. Never. I never have. And I've been really curious, you know, but it's something that, yeah, it, it, I feel like there will come a time in my life when, I, when I'm like, I'm ready f to get my, my own deck, you know, I think that's coming for me, but I, I'm not in a rush and I'm not forcing it. I know that the right deck or the right person will be like, here, this is yours. And I know that there's a world. I'm so curious by it and I'm so interested in it, you know, I believe It always has moved me, you know? Mm. I mean, you've read my cards now so many times, you know? And, and always, I'm like, I, it makes me think, it, I believe mm. in it, it gives me guidance. But yeah, but I've never read my own cards. And, and I think I will, but it just hasn't happened. Yeah. Is there a card you know a bit, some yeah. stuff about? Or no, not yes. at all? Well, the fool, of course. <laughs> the backpacker energy. Yeah, of course. It's my, my most favorite card. It's like, a, it's my reminder. For me, the fool, I, when I got my cards read by you, now I think it was four or five years ago, uh, at the end of 2019, right before 2020, right before the pandemic, the main card that came through was the fool and i remember you know you explaining to me this archetype and what it means and then christoph our friend you know he was also there uh, who you know i remember he talked to us and told us that for him he had a whole year where he embodied the fool you know and he obviously himself is a performer and uh, and like the, the, the idea of you know, walking into life with your eyes closed and and just like this position, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to accept and mm -hmm. allow. And um, to me, it's like, a, I'm naturally, I'm not like the fool, which is why the fool is so attractive to me because it is something that I think is, um, I would love, I, I love how I feel when I embody qualities mm. of the fool you know it's so beautiful which card are you if you're not the fool i don't know mm. i don't know i think i'm i think i exist 
between the fool and um, it's like I love control and I also love I'm a dreamer you know it's like I have a very a very logical side and I have a very dreamlike side and I think something I've been learning is that I have these two sides of myself always kind of fighting against each other you know mm -hmm. uh, which is why I think for me now lately it's like how can I merge how can mm -hmm. I make them come together you know uh, and I think the fool kind of it's like the energy of the fool reminds me to just let go a little bit more and mm -hmm. uh, yeah but I, yeah I, I don't know what card I would be what card do you think I would be I think uh, I think the pendu is the quality you have mm. to see things and to make your opinion before acting. Mm. But uh, I I don't mean you're super serious, but like you super like. Uh, Uh, welcoming people with open heart and you go on the the mountain of the of, of the people mm. to understand them so i think i mm. uh, often see you to be le pendu mm. uh, to observe to welcome mm. because it's the quality of the pendu to welcome i love that but uh, le fou you are also huh? yeah you have i have it. yeah mm. i have my fool with me <laughs> well Yeah, I mean, with The Fool, I think why it stuck with me so much. I remember we uh, we were in Uruguay. Uh, Christoph, our friend, picked us up, you and I. And it was Christmas Day, right? And we went to his house in the middle of these fields. And we had melon and white wine. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it was Christmas. Essential. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and it was summer, and it was, you know, it was like uh, we all, this Belgian guy, this French girl, and this Chilean girl, all in the middle of Uruguay on Christmas, spending time together like a family, you know? Uh, and you both, you know, did a full reading for me that night, kind of overlooking the year and what would come, and the fool was sort of the main, the main card that came through and I remember both you and Christoph telling me in different ways because like you know I mean mm. you're uh, the way you just you know he's so particular and he's so amazing and he's such a he feels and he's very spiritual and then you have so much knowledge of the tarot so I had these two wonderful intelligent like uh, you know in tune people telling me that I needed to just like embody this mm. archetype mm. And what that meant, and I remember, you know, being like, yeah, this is, I'm going into this upcoming year uh, with just this knowledge. And then we danced, and then, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then we were, the, yeah, <laughs> we embodied the fool. We're well, just so like tiny. going crazy, dancing in this house, you know, the three of us. And like the, oh, it was like, the, remember, there was nothing inside the house. It was completely empty. But... Christoph had these beautiful drapes and curtains and textiles like he had dyed, kind of hanging. Mm. So it was just the three of us on Christmas Day eating melon. For you, Tarot, yeah. is it a tool to have a look on the future? Mm. What the future uh, gonna look like? You know, I think for me, the way that I, maybe the way that I experience it is a tool to reorient my present more so you know it's a way to think of my current uh, reactions my current experiences and remember that maybe I need to adjust a little you know so the way you know it's like a, by kind of looking into the future I need to, it's like remembering that I need to, oh, maybe I need to change the path a little bit. Maybe I need to think of this in a different way. Do you think there is a destination for each other? Mm. We talk about destin, destiny. Mm -hmm. Is it something you believe in? I think, I think we have the power to change, maybe, or, or we have free will. Um, 
but I definitely, definitely, definitely think that there are certain uh, things, experiences, people that we need to meet, that we need to come across. I think there's a lot of nuance and a lot of um, details, you know, that we can change. It's like we, we have the power to decide and choose. I don't think that we're uh, incapable because there's just one specific fate that we need to follow. I do, but I do think that there are certain certain things that just need to happen, and I, it's like um, our our life moves in a direction for a reason. I think, and we're drawn to certain things. We're attracted. We feel uh, energy towards specific things, people, places, because I think. Uh, there's something there, right? It's like mm. we were talking about this last night. Like, why is it that we sometimes can feel connection to a place where we have mm. we have nothing in common to that place? Or sometimes you meet a person and you're like, I feel like I've known you forever. Mm. You know, I think um, sometimes life. You know, it's like when when things like that happen, where you you meet someone or you go to a country where you're not from but you're like wow this feels like i feel something here i feel good i feel like myself i feel magnetic i feel attractive i feel um energized by this i think that there's a reason why you're there you know mm. there's a teaching and yesterday we talked about the uh what we talked about yesterday ah, the, the, red, uh... the red string <laughs> yeah the red string i think you know, uh, my friend, my beautiful friend Natalia, you know, talked to me about this only a week ago or two weeks ago. And it's a beautiful Japanese legend that tells, you know, or explains fate, I think, in a really beautiful way. And it essentially, it talks about this old man that lives on the moon. And before you're born, he ties a little red string to your pinky finger and he ties it to another human. And throughout life, you're brought together by this invisible string that connects you two. And, uh, you know, the, the red string throughout your life, it can contract, it can tangle, it can, you know, f never feel like it's quite there, but, it's, but it never cuts and it's always there. And throughout life, we're, you know, we're taken to these people. And I just, um, yeah. Natalia explained it to me and I was like this makes all the sense in the world it's such a beautiful way of explaining it because sometimes you know it's like when you meet certain people where you're just like yeah you were meant to be in my life you were a million percent meant to come and teach me this and show me this and you know and for me now that I've kind of you know I've moved quite a lot and I've uh, you know I left Chile when I was so young and then uh, I've lived now in a few different places so sometimes I'll come across certain people where I meet them for maybe two days and I have this connection with them and and I know you know even if years go by I'm like I know you're gonna come around in my life I know I'm gonna see you again like you and I you know mm. hadn't seen each other in five years but I've always known mm. I've always known I'm like the time will come when Juju and I connect because we're tied by this thing already mm. like we've connected in a way that's kind of unexplainable and I have this like love and care even though I have no clue what's happening maybe in your life right now mm. it's like I, I feel really connected to you in that way and I feel really connected to a lot of people in my life you mm. know that are spread around mm. the globe maybe and I it's like um, but maybe you don't have to see them again for yeah. example yesterday you told me I, I said like I should have this conversation with this person just to to end the cycle. And you remember, remember what you reply? Yeah. You reply like, yeah, but maybe it's another conversation not with, yeah. with this person, you know? Yeah. And it was really smart. Yeah. The people you met just for two days yeah. are meant to stay. Yeah. Even if you don't uh, come again. in the tangible yeah. world, like say, hey, I touch her. Yeah. Like maybe come in your dream, come in your thought, like... I, I, yeah. I, I can see you today and we have uh, and yesterday or, and the day, day after I, I, we meet this week and we haven't been together for four years mm. yeah is that, is that true yeah four years but you never left me yeah, yeah. never I mean like uh, 
today we are in the tangible world, no, 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 but yeah, it's, it's meant yeah. to... Yeah, and I think it's really, it's exactly that, you know, it's like, even if you don't, it's like, when a story feels unfinished, what I really believe, and this is, you know, what I wrote about uh, not long ago, it's like, when a story feels unfinished, it's because it's not finished, and it doesn't mean that this person or this story you know, will come back and the the person maybe will come back and they'll explain to you what you needed to, they'll tell you what you <laughs> needed to hear. No, it's like maybe you'll meet someone else or maybe 20 years from now you're going to have an experience where you're going to look back and you're going to be like, oh, mm. that's why that needed to happen 20 years ago. And then you can close mm. that cycle and then you can close that story. So I think it's like... um stories always find a way to complete each other and it's not necessarily in the way that we think it might be right like mm -hmm. different characters come in uh, but there's it's like uh it's exactly that it's like it just needed to happen for a reason and now there's you just have to trust that time will give you the ending you know yeah i have a, another question i have a lot but my second question is okay my second? My second, yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Okay. <laughs> I know you are spiritual. You are. Yeah. But can you describe your spirituality? For me, spirituality is energy. Like, I believe in energy. I believe that you can walk into a room and you can feel something. You can feel when there's tension. You can feel when there's love. You can feel when there's... Yeah, it's like I I believe that we, you know, that one energy, it's like the most basic law of nature, right? Energy is never created or destroyed. Energy is recycled. Energy moves. So the moment that we're born, I believe that, you know, it's like we're made up of a collection of different kinds of energies, you know? So throughout our, our life, you know, maybe even going back to the fate question, it's like we're pulled towards certain things because of this thing inside of us, you know, and, um, yeah, I, I believe in, in that, you know, I believe in connection. I believe connection to me is also energy. You can feel something unspoken, you know, with the table and the trees or just between humans. I mean, like mm, yeah. the connection is between this pillow also, or, no, or just yeah. animals and plants or objects are something that like arise as energy mm. for what is energy? Mm. you know it's yeah it's funny because i would maybe say no i don't think that objects have energy but when i think about it i do th i mean art right art is energy like you look at a painting and you feel something and but but you know you feel something because there's a person behind it there's intention there's that force you know or even like um uh, I mean, yeah, nature, of course. Nature is like, it's all energy, you know? Time is energy. Time is energy. Uh, yeah, like all. everything. Mm. Everything, because I think uh, that's the way that the world functions, you know? Even like on, on like a very scientific, simple way, it's like it's energy. Everything is energy, you know? Uh, what we eat is energy. Uh, light is energy. You know, so, yeah, so I think with that too, I mean, it's like there's, when there's a, when there's a person, when there's a human uh, inflicting energy onto something, you feel that, you know, you can feel like, for example, uh, when I drink my coffee from a cup that was made by someone, my coffee tastes better. <laughs> yeah, mm. energies in my ear, the earrings that I wear mm. made by people. It's in the clothes that I wear, you know. Mm. I think that's why I I love uh, living. I love things made by people. That's why I love things, you know. Mm. It's not that I love things, but to me, it's like if I wear a shirt or like the jacket that I wore yesterday, knowing that I talk, you know, I met a woman. She made it. She got the textile from India. She made a reversal, and it's the most beautiful collection of colors in a jacket it's not just a jacket it's like a whole human you know mm -hmm. 
And I really it's an extension of, of your soul. In fact, I saw yeah. this quote yesterday. Yeah. It was so you. Yeah. I noticed you like yeah. from far, like, ah, that's Camilla. I can yeah. see her. And I haven't never seen this quote. It's so, yeah, yeah, yeah it's a kind and of. my uh, friend Leide, she, when we saw it together in El Rastro in Madrid, she was like, this is your coat. Mm. <laughs> like, mm. you found your It's quite like the body, in fact. We're going to yeah. let it at the end. Yeah. So do you think we have an Alma? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> where, where she goes after? I think she goes back to I think she goes back to the she she continues to move through different people and different things which is why I think I really believe for example uh, I believe in past lives you know I believe that we're not just us we're our grandparents we're you know We're other people that maybe we don't necessarily, you know, we're, we're just, we are each other. So, yeah, I think that a soul, you know, your soul, it's um, a, like a beautiful painting, you know, of just like a bunch of different souls. And I think when we go, they just go back to this beautiful place, you know, the universe, whatever you want to call it, uh, the... Um, And then it gets redistributed, you know? Then the soul kind of becomes something else, you know? Or you feel it. You feel it in different ways. You feel it in... You know when, like, um, someone reminds you of someone? Or, for example, like, my mom really believes that uh, I'm connected to her father, you know? Uh, she really thinks that my granddad is somehow... Like, you know, I remind I remind her a lot of him and he died on February 13th and I was born on February 13th and my mom always and he died really young and I was born a few years later. My mom was 28. He was 52 and he died in a motorcycle accident. Uh, and my mom is convinced that like he, you know, he's sent me or that we're connected. Sometimes I'll be doing things around the house and my mom will be like you're my dad, like, like, you're my dad, or, or, or she'll be like, oh, he, he would do that, and, um, he, like, loved, you know, the outdoors, and he had this really wild sense of adventure, and, uh, he was kind of the clown of the family, and my mom, you know, sometimes I'll even play music, or she'll, and she'll be like, oh, that was my, one time it happened, where my mom was like, that was my dad's favorite song, like, mm -hmm. I haven't heard that song in forever and it had been a song you know that I had been listening to just by chance and mm. I loved it and I just like played it for my family one day and so yeah so I think that the soul it's like it's not just us you know it's it's a whole line of people and experiences and things and I think when we die it just gets recycled and like repurposed and That's why we feel a connection to other people because it's not just us, you know? Mm. It's like uh, there's so much inside of us. Mm. Yeah. Are you superstitious? Um, yes and no. <laughs> I think... I think I... I hmm... Not in like a in a very literal sense, you know. I don't. It's not like I live my life not doing certain things because I think it'll be bad luck. But I do think, yeah, I try to be very intentional. You know, I believe in karma. I think I believe in uh, the way that you know that we experience, the way that that we give love, the way that we are comes back to us. So I try to live a really intentional, mindful life, and I try to give love, you know? I, I think um, that's returned. Everything is returned. Everything's a mirror, you know? So I believe in that. So, but I don't, you know, I don't think that if you see a black cat, I'm, no, I don't think I... Uh, I don't live my life in that way. Yeah. Numbers? No. No. The number 13 feels irrelevant because I was born on February 13th. My grandpa died on February 13th. I was born in a room, 13. 
Um, so the 13 kind of, I don't know what, you know, but I feel like there's something, there's something there. Um, I've never really explored it, but no, I've never, I, Ne numbers have never really been so relevant. They say 13 is bad luck, and I'm like, well, not so far. <laughs> Knock on wood. Huh? <laughs> Did you have already experience like bad karma or good karma? What mm. is it some stuff you believe in? I think I try to be really conscious of my thoughts. Um, I try to, you know, manifestation, I think the way that I see it is not like a, you think you can buy a mansion and then you know you visualize the mansion and then you get the mansion I don't think that necessarily works I don't believe in that but I do think it's a lot deeper than that it's your uh, it's like your neural pathways you know the way that your brain is wired our conditioning uh, if you can really truly believe that you can do something, that you can achieve something because you've seen it. You've seen examples of people like you, people that look like you, people that maybe had the same opportunities as you, you know? Uh, if you see that and you're exposed to that, then you yourself fully believe that you can also make it happen, which is why they say that, for example, men, you know, especially white men, like, they can achieve these things sometimes because they've seen it. So they're like, yeah, I can... I can be the CEO of a company like that and I can make that much money. Like, of course, because he did it and he's like, he's like me. You know, it's why for a woman sometimes it's harder, of course, you know, because we haven't seen examples, <laughs> you know? So I think it's, um, for me, it's like, if we can then begin to be conscious of that, it's like, okay, if I want to achieve something and not just like a material things, but anything, right? Like a relationship maybe, uh, but you haven't seen an example of it and you don't think that you're worthy of maybe receiving the love or receiving um, the care, you know, because of things that happened when you were a kid or, you know, anything, it's like, then it's not going to happen for you. So I think it's a matter of like, okay, well, how can I, start to relearn certain patterns how can I start to show myself that this is something that I can achieve um, and then when I really believe that the moment that you really start to believe that you can do it that you're worthy that's when things show up for you jobs uh, relationships friendships you know when you're like yeah I deserve a really good friend because <laughs> you know then like that's when the really good friend shows up I really think I really think that happens so that's my entire thing right now you know I think I'm trying to show myself that I deserve certain things or that I'm worthy of certain things and I you know it's a slow process it requires like me uh, taking care of my body you know it requires me Uh, having moments with myself where I can listen to myself you know like um, it's also it's like if you can't give yourself the love then you know then how are you gonna find that anywhere else so I do that by you know I try to be mindful of uh, one like on a very simple level it's like how am I taking care of my body you know I'm not great at it but like I try to get good sleep so I can have a good morning so I can have a good day or like eat things that make me feel good not always because I love bread and cheese <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I also yeah it's like slowly starting to understand you know I mean of course therapy you know I've been going to therapy now for a long time it's um, not just the therapy but the act of going to therapy it's like I am making the time to go and, and figure something out and think about my life and I'm trying You know, I think that starts to slowly rewire, you know, it's like you're telling yourself, you're teaching yourself um, that you're deserving of, you know, you that you, your money, for example, you're going to pay money so that someone can, you know, so that you can work on yourself. I think it's like doing little things like that for me is really important. But yeah, but I mean, to answer your question, I think 
I'm, I'm in search, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to do that. It's my journey right now and maybe my forever journey. I don't think we're ever going to arrive. Can you tell us about a magic moment in your life? Mm, yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> um, I think I've had, I've had two moments, two magical moments. Um, I'll tell you both. <laughs> So the first one happened when I moved from the U.S. to, or from Chile to the U.S. I was 12 and my family and I moved to, you know, to Missouri. Um, I had lived in Chile my whole life in a small town and my dad got a job in the U.S. So we ended up going there. When we arrived to the U.S. the first couple days, we didn't have a house yet. The house was like, you know, in the midst of happening, they were closing the deal. So we were staying at a hotel and, you know, in a room, it was my, my two sisters and I staying in a room in this hotel, like a Hilton in the whatever, Missouri, <laughs> not magical. <laughs> so we were in this room and the following day, so it was at nighttime, the following day, it was our first day of school. And I remember my two sisters and I were really nervous. We were, didn't know English. We had worn a uniform our entire life and we were going to a big, big public school in the US and we could wear whatever we wanted. So we were trying to choose our outfit <laughs> and we were all just nervous, you know, kids also, but not like kind of in a bad mood and just like, ah, oh. and I remember being so, I was just so nervous. And a couple of years before that, my, my grandma had died. My mom's, my dad's mom. Beautiful woman, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful woman. Sweet, you know, um, just, yeah, magical angel. She was like our, the, you know, the grandma that you would think it's like us. She would always hide M&Ms under our pillow when we would go visit her, you know, <laughs> just like a sweet woman. And she died really rapidly from, Um, leukemia and it was really tragic and she was you know young and healthy and and this happened quickly and she died and so this had happened a few years before and anyway so go going back to the hotel room in Missouri so my three sisters and I we were all choosing our outfit and all of a sudden there's no better way to explain this we were in the room and the entire room got filled up with this scent, this aroma, this fragrance, that the same, the same fragrance, the same aroma. It wasn't even a perfume. It was just the same scent of my grandma. She smelled a very, very particular way. It was like a, her scent, you know, when someone just smells like something and she had it very strongly. And this room, this hotel room in Missouri, all of a sudden for a few seconds, just completely smelled like my grandma and my sister looked at us and she she was like she was like the little one or Fran? Fran, Fran. Yeah. she looked at us and she was like grandma's here and we all just like looked at each other Danny was my little sister she's so young so she was like what <laughs> but like we all just hugged you know mm -hmm. like we all just hugged and it was like maybe I don't know five ten seconds of the scent And Fran just being like, Grandma's here. Like, she's here. Okay. Like, we're okay. How old uh, 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 you were? were I was you? 12. Fran was 14 and Danny was 8. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, I, you know, I talk about it with my sister and now and... That's like, so cute. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, you know, like... And what do you believe it was today? My grandma. My grandma, you know, of course. My grandma being like, you're okay, all of you, you know, I'm here. And I've ne it's never happened after, you know, but it was mm. like such a particular moment of just like, mm. like we, there we were, com lost, confused, different country, being from like mm. Chile mm. in Missouri. Like, yeah, I think it was my grandma for sure. You know so yeah so that was I was you know I was so young but I know I believe full, I mean in that moment I was like yeah 
there's mm. no question. This is my grandma. The other story, you, you told me you had both, I do. Uh, yeah, so the second story, it was it's crazy because it's about my grandpa. <laughs> I, so, you know, so I mentioned that my grandpa died on February 13th and my mom has always said that him and I are really similar and we, I've always felt this connection to him. I never met him, um, but you know, I've always heard of him and And yeah, and um, I so it happened maybe two years ago, two years ago. I was living in Los Angeles. Um, I was in a house living with two friends, but I was alone in the house and I was sitting in the kitchen writing. I was working on, you know, like a little poetry book at the time. So I was writing a poem and I, um, I was having dinner with my book or with my journal and I saw this like magazine right there that I had actually worked for so I started going through it and I saw this like little letter there that was like a letter from the author to her grandpa and it started with dear grandpa so I was like oh what an interesting I was like I should write a letter to my grandpa I don't know I've never done it so I opened my journal and I started writing this letter I started with dear grandpa and I've never I've never had this experience ever where I, for two hours, I like, I, and I don't even know how it was two hours. I feel like my grandpa, like I channeled my grandpa and he wrote the poem like that I wrote. I ended up writing a poem and, um, and I just feel like my grandpa fully came through and just like wrote this thing because two hours went by. I looked at the clock. I finished this thing where I was like, you know when you when you're working on a project and you just like lose complete notion and you're just like this is not me right doing this there's something bigger there's something else like and i'm just channeling right now and for me i was like i am purely the medium right now and i think this poem it felt like you know i finished writing it um i read it i sent it to my sister fran she called me crying and she was like this feels like grandpa wrote a letter to mom you have to send it to mom you have to send it to her this is like so I sent it to my mom and my mom called me crying and she was like this is like she was like it's my dad like this feels like my dad wrote this to me and and I again you know not to it's like I don't I don't think I wrote it you know and um I've never I mean, that's why I write, you know, that's why we do creative things, because we feel like there's something bigger being channeled through us, you know, that's what I look for when I write, and I've had little moments where I feel it, where you're just like, you forget about time, and all of a sudden it's dark, you know, and like, you've just been working on this thing, and it feels so good, and that's why I continue to do it, but I think this one was so particular, because I truly was like, I'm just words are like pouring out of me and I'm just writing this thing and yeah and then it, you know it felt like a spiritual experience truly where I was like this is I had never felt so connected to him you know like I was like he's here with me through me that experience was kind of like a again I was like I'm, I'm channeling something I think here is beyond myself um or that's you know it's like Yeah, it just felt, I maybe it's, I'm not explaining it well, but it just felt so powerful, you know? Like, it felt really different. It felt like I wasn't in reality for that moment. I was somewhere else. What are the dreams? Where does they come from? I think it's our... Where? Where? Well, I think it's obviously our, our subconscious. It's something... Uh, I don't know if I don't know if it's a I think it's again it's like the the beyond right like something outside of ourselves and our brain processing this information um that kind of comes through you know I I really I dream so much I dream every single night and I have like five dreams like it's sometimes too much <laughs> where I wake up and I'm tired where I'm just like I didn't even sleep, I just dreamt, you know? 
And then it's so crazy to me that some people don't dream, you know? Like, they, I, I dream, I close my eyes and I start dreaming. So I think, yeah, I think it's like, um, it's just, it's information, you know? It's information coming at you. And I think um, it's, a, it's our mind processing things. It's our body processing things, you know, that maybe we don't have the capacity to see when we're awake, you know? So I think it's information being handed to us. Um, Do you believe in telepathy? I think there is, yes. Yes, because I, I experienced it with my sister a lot, you know? Uh, Yeah, I think that sometimes there's like an understanding that goes beyond words, of course. You can look at someone and you can know things, you know. And without seeing each other. Yeah, also. Yeah, I think so. I think that I felt it with specific people, you know, when you can just feel. You just feel... Your grandma? My grandma. I felt it with... Yeah, I felt it a few times, yeah. More than a few times, actually, you know? I mean, crazy when sometimes you just think of someone and then all of a sudden you get a call from them because and they're like, I was thinking of you. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, of course. I think, um, I think we're a lot more powerful than we think. And I think our thoughts are a lot more powerful than we think. We don't give them enough credit in a good and in a bad way. When we talk to ourselves in a specific way, I think that affects everything. So monitoring the, our thoughts, I think, is like such a powerful tool that we don't think about too much, you know? It's like, our thoughts are... The mind is powerful. So yeah, so I think that when you think of someone, when you feel something, and, or something is coming at you, I think there's something being exchanged in the, in the air, you know? Mm -hmm. Or, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's like, a, again, energy. So yeah, I think telepathy and I mean with my sister I pff, all the time what is love for you hmm. love <laughs> love is love is love is life love is life force love is what keeps everything moving you know it's the it's meaning it's purpose it's uh, why we do things why we're alive I think I, there's a Jorge Drexler you know uh, which I love he like started his he has a song or he, he has a recording from uh, I think I believe it's like his sister or aunt I went to his concert in LA uh, a few months ago and he started the show with this like voice memo from the from his aunt and where the aunt was explaining she was like love is the most brilliant master plan of life because it's why we're still alive you know it's why we take care of each other it's why we feed each other it's why a mother and its baby like you know why the baby survives and why humanity has continued to survive it's like the most intelligent way to create a world is like by creating this thing this love you know that it's like it's why we do things it's why it's it's Um, it's life force, you know? So yeah, so I think nothing works without love. Just pick one card with, with uh, this, this mix. You're gonna mezcla and you're gonna mix them and all, but just to have one card, like, yeah. Le cadre de bâton. Okay, we can start. This is the four of hands, mm -hmm. the name of the podcast. <laughs> it's gonna be magical this is the magical moment yeah. so we're gonna see what the universe oh. are telling you today mm -hmm. and we have the four of ones with <laughs> us <laughs> true story can you describe the card yeah it's uh, four ones it, in a cross But there, you know, it's two, two ones going down and then kind of diagonally two other ones going down. And there are flowers. Um, it feels like, 
I don't know why it feels like spring to me. It feels like a uh, new life. You know, there's like a seedling kind of blooming. And right in the middle, there's a cube with what looks like a sort of bird flying with its, its wings open. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Take it. <sighs> Breathe. Oh, that's all good. You have two solutions, or you ask a question, and they're going to answer. Or ah. the question is, what, are you, what, what do you want to tell me today? That's mm. the second question, and they will respond. But you can pick one of the yeah. options. You can choose. I think I'm going to leave it up to the cards, what they want to tell me today, what I need to hear right now in my life. This is the past, this is the present, and this is the future. The past, we have to say, thank you, bye, even if it's the sun. Mm. I mean, like, yeah. okay, we've seen clearly, uh, it's clairvoyance, the sun. It's like happiness. So, yes, I've seen clearly, now I have to work on that, mm. on the present card. Mm. And that's the future potential, mm. the potentiality of now, Yeah. what mm. we are working. Do you want to have a look on this one? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. What do you see? I see it's the seven of cups, no? Cup of, yeah, seven of cups. Eight. Eight, huh? <laughs> yeah. And it's... Um, there's a balance right in right in the middle uh, there's life you know I see leaves growing and I see yeah eight cups full yeah the past is in the past and you are in peace with that mm. the eight of cups cups it's emotion it's intime it's what, how do you f how do we feel mm. eight is to leave something behind who don't serve you anymore mm. And so that's super healthy, super balanced. Past is in the past, in your energy. Mm. It don't mean like you forgot. Mm. It means like you are not struggling so much or the tarot is telling you, you know how to do. So mm. you mm. have that in you. Mm. So connect with that, with that ability because I told you you have, so if you want to hear that today, because if the card is here, it's, you need to hear that today, yeah. you are super good to let the thing go when they have to, to let new things come, mm. because it's how it works. Mm. It's happening. Mm. Let's see what you are today. Mm. What are the challenge? Oof, this one feels heavy. Uh, Ten, ten cups. Yeah. There's a, it's like a wheel with like a sword kind of right through it. And the, the cup at the top is sideways and it's spilling almost. Um, it's telling you that you are on the top of what you can, uh, the top of capacity to give and to receive. It's, it's the challenge today. Mm. I told you about uh, dark side and bright side. The challenge is to realize like all it's inside mm. and all can be outside. It's what we are talking about. And it's also telling you like a, a, a huge period of fulfillment is happening. Yeah. A huge period. Maybe you don't realize it. It's really what's happening today. Mm. Muy rico. Sí. Muy rico. The future, the three of cups can be like together celebrating. Mm. So soon you would have something to celebrate about mm. because you have eight of cups for the past. Yeah. Ten of cups for the present. I mean, like you are full of love. <laughs> like, I mean, like, and you're ready for abundance. Mm. And three of cups. Three of cups means like 
My God, we did so well. <laughs> It worked. Which I know, you 